Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so every year I brew a beer specifically for Thanksgiving. Uh, Pre-COVID times, I would bring it to whatever gathering we're having, but uh, this year it's looking like just me and my husband. So I'm going to do something a little different that I've never tried before, mainly because I don't have to impress a bunch of people at a family gathering. So, um, I'm taking the idea of what I usually do, which is my cranberry blonde, which is up here, you guys can see that. I also didn't wanna do the same video again, so here I am experimenting. So the idea I have for this beer is actually a lager. So I want something that's really dry and fruity and like maybe slightly tart, but not heavy, nothing that will compete with your meal. So kind of along the lines of more of like a champagne-like beer. So super dry, super crisp, refreshing. And uh, I, I love using cranberries for beer. Um, I think they just give a really unique flavor when you can get them fresh. I, I only make this beer like in November. Um, so, what I'm gonna make is a cranberry lime lager, and it's gonna be kind of an American lager. I have some Safale yeast that I'll grab once the time comes. Um, but what I really want from this beer is a bright pink color. Uh, so I've got a couple beets, and Basically, I'm gonna just juice all this together, throw in a Camden tablet to sterilize it, get anything weird off of it. I don't think there's much weird stuff on cranberries. They're super washed and the beets maybe, who knows. Um, but I'm gonna make juice out of all of it. So, you know, it's going through my juicer, it's going through the air and stuff. So I'm gonna sanitize it just to be safe. And Another thing I'm gonna do with this one that's a little different, well, two things. Um, I'm doing a no chill method just because I don't wanna chill in here, I'm tired of it. <laughs> and my beers are turning out great when I do no chill. Secondly, Mecha Grade Malt sent me an undermodified Pilsner malt called Gateway, and they recommend doing a step mash for it. So I'm gonna test my hand at a step mash. I think this will work really well with the claw hammer because you know you can raise the temperature up to whatever you want even during the mash which is great um so it shouldn't be that difficult doing it this way if you're doing like uh, a cooler mash ton it's a little more difficult because you've got to like boil water to increase your temperature as you go but claw hammer you just turn up the dial easy so let's get into it i'm not going to really look up an american lager style guidelines because this is a fruit beer fruit beers are kind of like throw your hat to the wind kind of beers. So I am gonna use the American Lager style in the Brewfather, but other than that, I'm gonna kind of stick to those guidelines, but other than that, whatever. And I think I'm gonna use a pretty general uh, hop profile. I'm not sure, I don't want it to be super hoppy and I'm not really sure what I've got. I think I've got a lot of Laurel, which I might try to use. Um, and I have Idaho 7, I might use Idaho 7. Um, but we'll see once we get into it. So I looked up how to step mash. So basically the idea is that you start at the really low end of a mash temp. So they're recommending around 138 or 59 degrees Celsius to start for around 30 minutes. And then you ramp it up slowly to 150 to 152 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 60 to 67 degrees Celsius for another 20 minutes and then you heat it up again all the way up to 168 degrees or 76 degrees Celsius. So the idea behind this is that you get more enzyme activity because you're hitting all of the enzymes at the temperature that they want. So you're gonna get a super dry beer because basically you're converting all the starches. So I think that's gonna be great. I'm gonna throw in all the fruit uh, into like, when we transfer into the fermenter. So. Uh, all that sugar will also be eaten, um, but I don't want to cook the cranberries at all because if you cook cranberries, they make jelly. So you can use this stuff called pectic enzyme, which is this. Uh, I might actually throw some in this anyway. Um, 
That will clear out your beer a bit, but I've never made a cranberry blonde that isn't like at least a little hazy. So I'm gonna just kind of use it as cranberry juice. And um, I'm freezing the, these to make the cell walls break apart basically. And this one I just pulled out to show you guys that I have it. Um, the beets are also gonna be raw. I don't want any beet flavor. I honestly hate beet flavor. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna use all of these. I'm gonna see how much juice this makes, honestly. And then I've got eight limes here that I'm, I'm just gonna use juice of eight limes. I think you get half an ounce of juice out of each lime, typically. So we could get four ounces. Who knows, we'll see. This recipe is kind of gonna evolve as I make it, so stick around for the brew video next. Um, should come out in a few days. And I'll give you the final deal, because I've gotta process all this stuff. Okay, so let's get into the brew father and build our recipe. So we're gonna go to recipes, new recipe name, cranberry lager. Um, equipment, I'm gonna keep with the grandfather. Ferment, fermenter batch volume, 5.5 gallons, no sparge. Okay, so style, we're gonna do American lager. So I'm gonna hit, try to hit like 5%. Um, it's good, whatever. All right, so let's start with our Pilsner. 10 pounds gets us there. Okay, so other than that, I'm gonna throw in, I'm gonna throw in a touch of honey malt, just, um, you know, give it a little more flavor and color. So, like, let's do a quarter pound. Actually, let's bump that up to half a pound, see if we can get to 5%. Okay, so that gets us to 5%. Beautiful color, not that it matters because we're gonna make it pink. Let's do yeast fermentus. I always forget that it's called fermentus and not sapho. Let's see, I don't remember what kind of yeast I have. I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, so I've got the Saf Lager 23. So it's a West European lager, apparently. I'm gonna make a big starter of this um, just to give it ample power. So that actually bumped us up to 5.3%. So, fine. So our water, I'm gonna do the just the LA tap water with a Camden tablet. We'll just put it as American Light Lager. Auto. Needs almost nothing. Um, I think I'm just gonna add like one gram of calcium chloride and call it good. All right, so two grams of calcium chloride, fine. Temperature for the mash is, we're gonna start at 138. Then we're gonna go to 138 for 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna go to 156 for 30 minutes, and then this is gonna ramp for 20 minutes. 168, and we're gonna keep this at like 10 minutes, safe. Okay, so hops. Let's see, Let's see what Laurel says. Is Laurel not a thing? You know what, I'm actually going to just raid what I have in my fridge to try to get rid of some stuff. So I'm gonna just go with Centennial. Um, you know, it's a citrusy hop that'll go well with the limes. And I'm gonna put one ounce at the 60 minute mark and just see what that gets us. Way too much. Okay, we're not doing that. We're gonna put one ounce at the 30 minute mark and see what happens. Way too much. Good thing I didn't open a new bag for this. So 0.75 ounces at the 30 minute mark. That's so few. Guys, I've been over hopping all of my IPAs. Please help me. I need to go to hop rehab. <laughs> all right. So for our miscellaneous, I'm gonna add lime. I'm just gonna add, as just a journal thing, uh, juice of eight limes 
juice of lime, sure. And I'm just gonna put eight items. This is gonna go in primary. So put that there. Cranberries. Um, we're gonna put three pounds of cranberries. And then primary, cranberries, juiced. I'll weigh these, I guess. So that's about a pound of beets. Beets, juiced, one pound. And that is also going in the primary. Um, okay, so the other thing is fermentation temperature. So we're doing a lager, and I'm gonna start it at 50 degrees. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the Oktoberfest. It worked out so well. Um, I'm gonna just ramp it from 50 degrees up to like room temperature, and then just call it done once it's up there. So that'll be about 22 days. It's a long time. But it should work. Ramp days, 22. Save. Cool beans. Okay, so I'm gonna do this no chill. So tomorrow is when I'll pitch my yeast once it's um, down to 50 degrees. I'm gonna um, have to transfer it from the kettle to the fermenter and chill it down with glycol to get it down to 50 degrees and then pitch my yeast. Um, you don't wanna pitch lager yeast when it's hot still. That'll taste bad. All right, well, I think that is all I can give you for the recipe. Uh, I will see you guys back here for the brew day. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Uh, if you guys want to get my videos ad free early, get monthly happy hours and merch, hit the Patreon link above and go ahead and join. And I'll see you guys next time. I want to thank my newest patron, Corey Mesh. Thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Sent me an under modified melt. <laughs> under modified. No.